Hey everyone, and welcome out to episode 129 of a Nerd Name Mark podcast. Wow, 129, that is ridiculous. My chair needs to be like oiled because it squeaks so damn much now, and it's annoying me. I have to get some of that WB, WD 40 and spray it because it's driving me insane. Um, A lot going on. Work has been just very, very busy. Very, very busy indeed. Um, So there's going to be some delays i think going forward i may have to just release the podcast on either tuesday or wednesday and stop the fridays for a bit because of my work schedule um which you know is gonna be more difficult because then i won't have time to like get newer comics to talk about like today full disclosure i'm recording on a monday i don't normally record on mondays i usually record either wednesday or thursday and have it up on friday So now it seems that from a day of the week standpoint, either Monday or Tuesday will be the proper days that I can get it recorded. So that kind of sucks because I'll be at least at minimum a week out of comics. But most of the time, I don't even get comics every week. This week would is a special reason because Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 100 comes out in two days. So I'm definitely getting that because I will be on a live stream Friday night. For a rollover queen again, we're going to be talking about issue 100 of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So you want to check that out, go subscribe to his channel. And yeah, my kitten is like losing her shit right now. It is ridiculous. Like I fed her. She gets hyper after she eats. She just is like unlimited energy. And she's still a little firecracker. She's now, I think, nine, maybe 10 weeks old. So just under three months old. She's a little bit over two months old, like two and a half months old. She's ridiculous but we love her and she's just a joy except that night when she attacks us so obviously i don't have any comics to talk about but i do have a plethora of manga uh for those of you watching on youtube you can see the manga shelf has gotten drastically larger um and i've been still installing lights and this and that actually let's put on some lights so we can see everything Ah, uh, boom, light up everything. It's my favorite thing to do, just take the remote, but boom, everything lights up. Um, so yeah, a lot more manga. Obviously, some stuff is tilted over because I have all my new manga that's going on the shelves because I organize it to add new manga because I'm trying to finish off some of the series I started and I'm caught up with and I'm trying to shy away from getting new runs of anything, but it's been really tough because my friend Andrew who I've mentioned before, keeps recommending new manga to me. And then I keep finding new manga myself that I'm like, ooh, I want to read this. So a lot of manga to go over. And I think I'm just going to start with that because, yeah. And so right off the bat, the first volume of manga I have picked up is Momo, The Blood Taker, volume one. Uh, I was I was at Barnes & Noble, obviously, or obviously, because that's where I get most of my manga. But um, I was sitting there and I was walking and I saw it on the shelf of like where they put all the new release mangas and like volume ones of stuff. And like it caught me because it's about a string of murders where people are getting their blood drained. And I was like, you know, I get a lot of rom coms and, you know, stuff like Ultraman and Yokai that I'm still catching up on and, you know, this and that. And I was like, you know what? This actually intrigues me. So I picked up volume one of it. I'm looking forward to start reading it. Um, I'll go, when I go over what I'm actually reading, uh, you'll know that I'm finishing some other stuff first. Um, actually, let's go right into the next one. So, I'm currently on volume two of, uh, Hitomi-chan is shy with strangers. And because I'm almost over volume two, I was like, man, I'm gonna pick up volume three and four. Because why not? And I know very fan service covers, and it's a very fan service filled manga but it is actually very entertaining i do because like uh, i'll go over it after i'm doing my manga list I'll, I'll go on my rant of why i read the types of manga i do i'm also catching up i picked up volume eight of don't toy with me miss nagatoro uh season one of the anime really got me hooked into the point where now i'm like going in on the manga and i like that each manga volume is a different color like this is more like a magenta the one before that was like a a powder sky blue like i like that each book is a different color they really stand out very few manga does this i know 
uh, Nagatoro does this. Quintessential Quintuplets does that. There's not a lot that do that. Uh, Kaiju number eight is doing that right now. With volume three was yellow, volume two was blue. So I really kind of dig that. And the next manga I'm going to be reading when I finish volume two of Hitomi Shan is. I finally got volume 17 of Ultraman. They finally released se volume 17. I feel like I've been waiting so long. Ultra the Ultraman manga is one of the things that got me back into manga again. Because I love Ultraman. I mean, that's not even a secret. And when I started reading the manga, I was like, oh, this is good. I mean, you saw anyone who's watching YouTube, you saw the thing, the collection is that I was only getting the Ultraman manga. And then I started getting like Demon Slayer and stuff like that. But Ultraman is what really kickstarted me getting back into manga. And I've been waiting months and months for them to release chapter, uh, volume 17. And they finally have. So I cannot wait to read this. Um, next up. Uh, these are further ahead in my reading, uh, I guess, checklist. But I was at Book Off, and they were doing manga sales again. And they had two ReZero ones. So they had Chapter 3, Volume 3. And then they had Chapter 3, Volume 11. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why would I get 3 and 11? I'm still on Chapter 2 um, of the manga. So how it works is Chapter 1 had two volumes. Chapter 2 had five volumes. I believe chapter three has 11 volumes, but or 11 or 12 volumes. But I was like, these are discounted. So even if I'm not going to get to them under four dollars each. So I was like under four dollars each. I need to just pick these up because they can, you know, I can read them. And, you know, when I get to them and if I ever get to the point where, like when I do catch up and get to those chapters, I might not find them for that price. And then I have to pay the retail price, which is. $13. I'm like, I don't like, I'll get them now while they're on sale. Um, hold that thought. The kitten is meowing because her toy fell underneath the door and I have to go grab it for her. So, so I, should, I, should, I should probably explain why the kitten's toy is in the living room and she's in the bedroom. So because she's a kitten, she has to eat special food, you know, kitten food. And because we have another cat, Scarlet, who's about four, almost five years, I think she's like four or five years old. She eats adult food and she's a pig. And she literally will go and eat the kitten's food, and the kitten will eat her food. So when I feed her, I have to feed her in the bedroom with the door shut. And Scarlet out here with her food, so they'll eat their respective foods. And then when they're done eating, I open the door, pick their food dishes up. So there's no cross-eating each other's foods that they shouldn't be eating. And she's playing with toys. And she slides them under the door and likes to grab them and pull them back in, but it was out of reach. So she puts her nose up underneath the door and meows at me. And I'm going to let her out when Scarlet's done eating. Because Scarlet's still eating. And she's just enjoying her food. So yeah, that's a little sidebar of the kitten situation. I was saying, yeah, for ReZero, I wanted to get these two because they were on sale. And clearance down. And it's well where it's like, hey, if I once I finish Chapter 2 and I get into Chapter 3, I don't want to sit there and be like, oh man, I wish I bought Volume 3 when I had the chance and I didn't. So it's like, yes, I will sometimes jump around and get other volumes of manga if they're ahead of where I'm at or what I have, just because they're on sale. I've done that with Yamada-kun and the Seven Witches, uh, Yokai, and a few others, because you never know when you're going to find a sale. And I know I'm going to keep getting the other ones, so I might as well, you know, do that. Uh, next up, continuing more rom-com stuff. I finally got volume six of Uzaki-chan Wants to Hang Out. Uh, charming manga, I know... Dude, the covers really don't really... They, they, they kind of make me look like I'm a deviant with the manga I ever read. I noticed it's not going to get any better when I keep going down the list uh, at all. Uh, next up, I got Volume 3 of Classroom of the Elite. I read Volume 1, um, and I was like, oh, let me jump into Volume 2. And then I saw Volume 2 is in stock. I was like, yeah, I might as well get Volume 3 because I'm going to read 2. And it'd be nice once I finish two, jump right into the three. Because I don't really like to jump around too much between mangas I'm reading. I usually read one or two volumes at a time. Um, and next up, for my ultimate, ultimate, you guys can judge me manga. Uh, this was recommended to me because it's hilarious, apparently. And then I read some of it and I was like, you know what? This actually does look hilarious. Very lewd. I just warn you, but it's called... 2.5 dimensional seduction and i was like i don't know if i want to get this but it's a cosplay rom-com 
and I do like my dress up darling, even though that even though it's kind of a rom com, it's not overly like in your face um, comedic. But this one apparently is like I read a few preview pages to uh the whatever is on Amazon where you can preview the pages, and I was like, you know what, this is hilarious. The covers don't don't help at all. Especially when what do you mean? Oh, there's like nothing. Thing at all i don't know what you're talking about um but you know it i'm a sucker for really like for rom-coms and raunchy comedy i don't think we get like when you think about it, the 90s early 2000s we got a lot of that stuff in tv and movies like look at the american pie movies and everything else that went van wilder and stuff like that and then slowly that style of comedy from a U.S. market wasn't really being released anymore in theaters and on TV and direct TV. Like, that type of comedy just fizzled out. And it's alive and well in manga, I can tell you that. So I was like, screw it. I would, I would pick this up. I'm going to read it. I'm probably really going to enjoy it. Um, and now, uh, I got Spy Family Volume 4. I finally found Volume 4 out in the wild. Like, I finished the first three volumes a while ago because the first season of the anime is the first three volumes. And I was like, where? Like, why can't I find volume four anywhere? And I finally found one copy left at Barnes & Noble because, you know, I have their, like, membership so you get, like, the discount and everything. And I was like, man, I really want to read volume four. And they had one copy left. So, like, I need to grab it. I want to finish and see where the rest of the story is going. So I was really happy about that I found that. Then another one, uh, I'm really curious. I got this on sale at Book Off because my main two places I go for manga is Book Off and Barnes & Noble. Sometimes um, I'll go to Target because Target does like 20% off, but they're carrying a lot more mainstream manga, and it's really like the main ones I always see there are um, Soul Leveling, Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, Drag Ball Super, One Punch Man, Demon Slayer, stuff like that. And it's like, I'm not getting into One Punch and you know, One Piece. And I'm like, I'm not really getting any of those. Um, but I did get Fly Me to the Moon. Um, really curious about this because it has to do with, you know, different mythos from Japan and is it someone from space, this and that. I'm like, you know what? It was on Clearance Volume 1. If I read it and I don't like it, worst case scenario is I bought a volume with something I didn't like. But I did read over some of the synopsis stuff and some of the pages on like while I was there, and I was like, you know, this actually does look pretty appealing. I'm, um, I'll check it out. Why not? You know. And then last but not least, I finally got volume three and four of the you know combo one of High Rise Invasion. They have only the book off, and usually these are about twenty bucks each US. Um, I've been chipping away i'm gonna start chipping away them like probably like every paycheck pick one up maybe two if that because they have all of them there at book off so i saw they had the complete run i'm like i didn't really have it in me to buy the complete run right then and there just because budget a lot of my stuff because common rider and toku and everything else like you can't you know that'll take from something else that i might want to get so i've been chipping away at those and yeah so i really this is one of the things i've been like searching for so much like uh like i the, the idea of it the premise everything is so cool and i was like man i really want this i've been hunting like i've literally been actively looking for this for quite some time because i missed out on the first set that was volume one and two and anytime I'm, i see them at stores now it's always like volume like five and six or seven and eight and i'm like man i just want one and two please like that's all i want so i finally found those which is nice and then I'm trying to think. So that's it for manga, but I mean it's not a bad, not, not a bad looking stack of manga. Honestly, it's awesome. This is, this is a good amount, good amount of manga. Chair, it's so annoying. I hate it so much. I hate making so much noise because I can't really edit that out if I'm already talking. If I'm quiet and the noise happens, I can like take it out and edit, but. If I'm talking and it makes a noise, I can't because I got it out. My voice and like the background and my noise reduction and everything else I normally do doesn't get rid of it. Um, toys, not much. After the the Commander Geats like DX Desire Driver, I haven't really been buying anything. Um, when I was at Book Off, I found some more candy toys, which they never I never see candy toys, especially new in box. But I got all three boxes for Zio to make the Mecca from that show. 
So I'm stupid chair. So I'm really excited to uh, get that built and put that on display. But uh, the next item I got, I really, uh, I need to do a special episode about this, but I wouldn't be able to do this alone. I have to have a guest. I already have the guest in mind. He's been on the show a few times. I've been on his podcast. We have a long history. It's Chris. I have to have Chris back on to talk about Batman the Animated Series because I found this McFarland Toys 30th anniversary owl hitting us up in the face. Batman the Animated uh, Series statue thingy. And it's cool because it makes the full display from like the, you know, the, the poster and the logo for the show. But the lightning lights up. And I was like... That is badass. I need to build it. Actually, let's see. If you're watching that video, I'm going to push the button to see if you guys can see it light up. Where's the button? I can't find the button. There's mine. Ooh, blue. But that's really cool. Um, I need to put that on display. I've actually started cleaning off a shelf for it to go on display. The downside is, I've been... I was looking into it because I was like, what is this? I didn't even know this existed. Apparently, this is supposed to be like a New York Comic Con item. But, like, I found it at Target. So, I don't know if it was supposed to be New York Comic Con. And then it just got released from retail because New York Comic Con hasn't even happened yet. Unless it was, like, last year. I have no idea what it is, like, how, what, like, the history is behind this. But I found it at a random Target. Oh, where the Target was I at? All the way up in, um, oh, I was in San Diego, but it was, like, up in, like, Carlsbad, and Encinitas, like, Escondido area, and, like, going heading towards, like, Oceanside, and I was, like, okay, and I just saw it there by itself, I was, like, what is this, and I just grabbed it, and I'm, like, you know what, and I just held on to it, the point where my was just, like, wait, 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 you're just gonna get that, I'm, like, I don't even know how much it is, but, like, there was no other one, so I'm, like, holding it. And like I sent a photo to Chris, he's like, I need that. And I'm like, yeah, well, me too. Like, I'm <laughs> finders keepers, okay? This is mine now. Uh, but yeah, it's it's such, it's so nice looking. And I don't usually get a lot of McFarlane toys, like DC stuff. Some of the DC stuff is good. Um, like, I had the Lex Luthor power armor, uh, gold label one, where it's painted, you know, red and blue to match Superman. Um, I have the Martian Manhunter gold label one but most of the mcfarland toys i have are the my hero uh actual you know statues like figures not the little mini size ones or anything that i have the larger size one on a shelf with all of them like you know most of the ones that have been released one missing like five or six left and i have all of them uh but yeah that's um where but that's where i'm at with like my McFarlane toys because most stuff i get is like NECA. i'll get you know, the Toonie Terrors, which, uh, the new wave dropped. I can't find them anywhere at all. And it's, like, hurting my soul because they have uh, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I think they're doing Hocus Pocus, all these other ones. And I'm like, I need those. I have not seen any of them in stores yet. But I see them popping up online where people are trying to resell them for, like, 60 to $80. And I'm like, no. I'm not in a hurry. I'll find them in the wild like I always do. I don't think... Outside of the Loot Crate Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw, I have not bought any of the Toonie Terrors online. I've actually successfully found them all in stores, especially the Glow in the Dark Chase Nun, which is not labeled. I don't know why they didn't label the Nun Glow in the Dark on it. It's just a secret chase, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just kind of like from like a non Toku stuff. Like, I once while I find something I really like. And this was, mm. but I do plan on, I definitely want to do an episode going over Batman the Animated Series, but like I said, that's not an episode I'm going to do by myself, because it's a lot to talk about, and I'm, a, I'm not a diehard fan, I'm a huge fan of it, but Chris is definitely a big enough fan, well me and him could definitely go over and have a good conversation about easily the best animated comic book series ever made. Alright, so... Uh, let's see, we talked manga, we talked toys and collectibles. What do we talk about next? Oh, you know what? Video games. I've been playing a lot of video games in my free time. Uh, I've been playing a lot, still a lot of the SD Gundam Battle Alliance on my Switch. As well as I started the 
first AI Somnium Files game. It's kind of like a detective, visual novel type game. Um, cause I got the sequel before, and I was like, oh, let's start playing these finally. So I've been playing that in SD Gundam on PC. I've been playing. Oh, I'm all to do. I've tried Gundam Evolution. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. I'm going to play it a little bit longer. I'll be able to actually, like, really talk about it and give my full thoughts and opinions on how, on the game. Uh, I've been playing Multiverses. I know I'm not a big Smash Brothers fan, but this is actually a fun game. I'm actually really enjoying it. I unlocked Gizmo, so that was the selling point for me. I was like, you put Gizmo in there? I'm sold. Like... I don't know what I have this stuff is because I've never seen Rick and Morty. I've never watched Adventure Time or anything like that. Like, I know the DC characters like Scooby and stuff like that, but... I like Gizmo's selling point. So, especially because uh, Stripe is being added in and Black Adam. So, like, okay, this is cool. I can get behind this. It's free to play. Um, It's kind of frustrating because I'm not really big on Smash Bros. anymore. Like, I haven't really fully enjoyed or played a Smash Bros. since, I think, the GameCube. I don't even have the Switch version, so yeah, that's not. But it's it's fun. Uh, kind of evolution. I'm still, you know, like I said, I'm still on the fence about it because it's. I think it's like what? I think it's a six v six or five v five like objective first person shooter with Gundam, and it just feels hollow. Like you don't. There's no personality to the Gundam units you're playing as. Like, if you pick Barbados, yeah, you can do some melee and this and that. Or you pick RX-78 and Unicorn's in there behind a paywall. And, or you kind of lock it, and, like, eventually. And I'm just like, they don't, like, other than making the suit you like, there's no real, they all have different game weapons and how they play. But it doesn't feel like you're in a mobile suit. It doesn't feel like you're a Gundam. So as of right now, the current best, Gundam game you can pick out is SD Gundam Battle Alliance, and I'm put a lot of time in that. I got a few of my units that I use the most up to level 41. I'm hoping to clear the main story in another week or so, and then I start you know farming and everything else because it's very grindy. It's a very grindy game, and yeah, it's kind of obnoxious. So sadly, I don't really have a main topic. This week. Um, for those of you who follow me on social media, uh, I came out of my retirement, so to speak, for writing and doing journalism stuff. Uh, I've wrote two articles. One went live on Sunday. Another one is going to be going live in another day or so for a new website called Superhero Time. Uh, basically, a lot of, it's a Toku website, news, reviews, and stuff like that. It's something I've been wanting to dabble in writing again, but the an oper like there were there weren't a lot of like avenues I wanted to go through. Like I didn't want to get back into video games again. I didn't want to really write about comics or stuff like that. And I really am a big Toku fan. Anyone who subscribes and watches my YouTube videos knows I do a lot of Toku stuff. I do watch a lot of other stuff. Um, like I said, I do have to catch up on She-Hulk still. I feel bad that I kind of fell off on that, and I think a lot of people did, honestly. Um, it's one of those I just can't do the week-to-week -week model. I like the binge-watch model, and I'm probably not going to... I'm probably not going to do a video review for She-Hulk until the season's over. Same with a few of the animes, like Friend to Girlfriend, this and that. I started reviewing them, and I stopped because I was like, I just, I'm not... I don't have time to, like, watch them plan out a video, right? For, like, you know, record, edit, and everything else. I don't have the time right now. Like, I'm barely getting the videos done that I can right now. For It's going to be, you know, pretty hectic for a couple weeks. Um, but I was like, you know what? Opportunity arose. I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll definitely write. I can. I've done this before. I haven't written anything in four years. After doing it for almost 12 years but it's nice to write again it's nice to find a uh, a website and a brand that i believe in that i you know, want my name attached to when i write a review or a video or an article not just a review but any articles i want my name attached to something that i see the potential in and i know where i can go because it just started 
Um, I think it's been up, the site's been up for like, you know, three, four days. It's up to nine articles, a lot of good writers there, a lot of good talent. So definitely check them out. I'll put a link in the description of the video and the audio version of this. Or if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen some of my retweets. I've retweeted some of the articles, not ones I, not just ones I've written, other ones that like you should definitely check out. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't really a tough decision either. Like I've been kind of the last couple months just being like, I kind of want that outlet again where I can just you know write you know about uh, things I care about. And let's face it, I'm not playing a lot of games. So I am, but I'm not like current with all the new games. And I like I really do like Toku. Like I love Toku so much. And sometimes you know things. I feel like there's, there's some things that are good for video and some things that work from a writing, like, uh, article standpoint. So, that's why I was like, you know what, let's, uh, hi, Scarlet. Hi. What? Sorry, the cats. Come on. Up. Oh. Come on. Hi. I'm recording a podcast. Yes, I'm recording. I know, she's cute. So... Yeah, it was, it wasn't a decision made lightly. It was something I was, like, thinking about. I've seen other... You know, Toku websites and this and that. And I was like, you know, I kind of, you know, want to just looking at who's, you know, attached to what. And I'm like, you know what? Like, this is, it was honestly like kind of a tough decision because I have friends who write for a few other websites. And, and I was like, okay, we got a cool friend. But it's like, I saw this as kind of like a clean slate, you know? And it's, it's refreshing. Um, I'm gonna stick with it. I would say last time I stuck with it, I did it for 12 freaking years. Um, and yeah, it's not bad. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy this. I, I think after all this time, I kind of missed writing, but I didn't miss the bullshit that I dealt with with the gaming industry and bullshit opinions and like how, like, the PR side of things and that is just not appealing in that industry for writing and journalism. So I was like, you know, I'm okay with just being a writer. I don't want to have to deal with that stuff right now. Hi, honey. Yeah, Scarlett's a big baby. She gets very jealous because, you know, I cooled a kitten so much, so now she's acting like a kitten. Hi, you're too big. But I'm trying to think what else. There's not really anything else. This is a quick episode. I've got... Some stuff in the works still, because October is right around the corner, actually, next freaking week. And we got horror episodes that I need to start, like, you know, finishing, you know, planning out and everything else. Because I don't want to, you know... Can't miss the horror month, okay? I'm going to be talking so much stuff. I've already got three episodes, like, the, the plan and the title of what I'm going to be doing. I just got to get a little more in-depth to plan it out and research it. It should be really good. It should be a lot of fun. This is my fourth time doing it. I'm shocked. Like that. It, it, it's kind of funny because I always get, not to talk too much analytics, I always get a good spike in listenership when I do the horror month. And I feel bad because like a lot of people were like, hey, you should um do a horror podcast. And I'm like, yeah, I should. And I started like planning it out. I had a trailer done. I have the logo. I have it parked. And I just had it kind of sit down and start doing episodes and that thing's been parked like since last year like the trailer and the trailer has a lot of downloads and listens and i was like damn i should have probably like i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna lie if i had done episodes based off the trailer listenership the the it would have just de demolished my listenership on this podcast like it was ridiculous and sorry my chair my chair sounds like farts i just realized um but, yeah, so I'm like, I'm looking forward to next month. I'm freaking tired right now. I literally recorded this. I just got off of working for almost 10 hours. I'm freaking exhausted, you guys. Like, I don't think you understand. And I still got other videos I gotta do and edit and record and write up. Ugh. My eye keeps itching really bad. But that's it for the episode. Listen, I think you guys who are listening and who are watching... I sometimes I feel like the quality isn't there um, and then I'm just like dialing it in and just phoning it in on autopilot and I actually genuinely get bothered by it like I'll turn off this camera to sit there and like I'll hit up one of my friends in Discord or on the phone or my lady and I'll just be like man like I sometimes I hate the like not doing the podcast just 
the quality. I feel like almost like wasting your time because it wasn't a good enough episode. And then I want to record it, re-record it, but then I'm like, yeah, but I don't know what I said in this. It won't sound as genuine because now it feels forced, which I never script anything. I have, sometimes I'll have bullet points up. Today I didn't. Sometimes I will. If it's something I'm going in, like horror stuff, I always have the bullet points because I want to get factual stuff right. Most of the time it's just, I have an idea for what I want to do. And just do it. Because I wanted to feel, man, motorcycles too. I just want to feel more genuine, you know? I am a person. I, I make podcasts, like, I don't want to be an automaton trying to, like, robot be like, here, this point, talk, 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 talk. Like, I'm human. I'm a person, and, you know, there's more infliction, there's more, you know, you can tell, if you're watching, you can tell when I'm excited about something. You can tell when I don't care about something. If you're listening, you can tell my tone of voice. And, you know, when, you know, maybe I'm, I'm not all in it. And, yes, I'm all in it with this stuff, but it's like sometimes I just, I, I hit I hit end recording, and I'm just like, damn, like, that's ass, you know? And, yes, I'm going to be my toughest critic. But I appreciate everyone who's been checking out the podcast lately. We've had an influx in people watching videos. I love that people are checking out the video more. I know, like I said, 90 Eight percent of my audience is audio only. So those of you who check out the YouTube channel and watch the podcast, I appreciate you guys. And those of you who stuck through and still listen to the audio ones, even when they're not that great, I thank you guys for that too. Um, but this has been episode one hundred and twenty-nine of our Nerd Name Mark podcast. The podcast can be found on all podcast listening platforms, whether it's uh, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon music podcast i think it's just under amazon music you can type in the search bar for podcast type in under a mark podcast boom it's there um i'm still using that good pods app i really like that i've been discovering a lot of good podcasts through that app um it's actually really cool um and then and that's really for the place obviously the podcast is home um uh, Post it on Anchor, link in the description to get to the Anchor Hub, and you can do a drop down to see if it's on your podcast listening platform. If it's not, let me know on social media, like whether DM on Instagram or Twitter. Just DM me. It's my, my username is a nerd name Mark. Just DM me. Be like, hey, is there a way you can put the podcast on insert platform here? Because it's not available, and that's what I use. And I will do everything in my power to make sure it's on the platform that you can listen to. So you don't have to download another app on your phone and have more TOSs to agree to. So, yeah, I have no problem doing that. Um, that's why it was on Podcast Republic. Because someone was like, hey, can you put on Podcast Republic? I actually use that for my podcast. I'm like, that's how I listen to my soul. Someone was like, pod me. And I'm like, so, all right, push a button. I'll have it host. I'll have it, you know, the RSS feed over there so you can listen to it. So, yeah, that, that's, that's the spiel. I thank you guys for listening, and I thank you guys for watching. This has been episode 129 of the Nerd Day Mark Podcast. My name is Mark, and I'm a nerd.